This program is brought to you in association with First National Bank of Botswana. FNB, how can we help you? Are you pondering on leaving your current employ to pursue your entrepreneurship aspirations? Do you believe that you are cut out to lead your own troop through the treacherous entrepreneurship terrain? If you've answered yes, then you might want to stay tuned to tonight's episode of First Issues as our guest, the brilliant Mumpuluki Lerumo Mohobe, shares his nuggets of wisdom on the transition from being a full-time professional to an entrepreneur. Welcome to First Issues. In line with these ambitions, he's had to walk the talk, having business endeavors that include a real estate company, a legal practice, and other arguably fruitful ventures. However, it has not always been that he was an entrepreneur, or a successful one at that. This journey only started after a deliberate shift in mindset eons ago, and the rest, as they say, is history. You see, Murobe is also a senior partner at Lerumo Murobe Legal Practitioners, which was founded over three decades ago. It was when he was waist-deep practicing law that a trigger forced him to look into other ways of income generation. Tonight, we talk about this particular trigger and the kind of mindset that he had to adopt that he believes catapulted him into being a renowned entrepreneur in the country. Ramurobe, thank you so much for coming on First Issues and affording us your time. Um, today, we want to sit here with you, have you share with us some nuggets of wisdom as regards, you know, the sort of mindset shift that goes into transitioning from being a full-time professional to being an entrepreneur. But um, before that, at this point, I would love for you to share with us what triggered you to venture into entrepreneurship. In terms of uh, my journey, um, my background is in law. Um, I trained as a lawyer and obtained a master's degree in international trade and banking, the law of international trade and banking. So I was quite um, excited to practice in that field of specialization. But over time, um, it became clear that prospects for expansion or gr and growth were limited. Um, I had a particular challenge around 1999, 2000, where there was a possibility of me losing my practicing certificate because of an alleged uh, problem, which, which was eventually cleared. But during that time, I think it was a two-year period, uh, when even some litigation was involved over that problem uh, with the law society and everything. It actually became a blessing in disguise because it, um, it got me to look into personal development. So as I ventured into personal development, coming across people like uh, Robert Kiyosaki, coming across people like uh, Napoleon Hill and their writings, and people like uh, Klassen, you know, the, the books I'm referring to, one is you know, think and grow rich, and the other is the richest man in Babylon, and then the famous one for Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and particularly Cash Flow Quadrant. These books, which I immersed myself into during the midst of my challenge, my legal challenge, opened other avenues in terms of opened my mind and got me very, very much interested in real estate. And around 2000 and 2001, I focused more and more in real estate uh, development and acquisition. I can't imagine it being easy having to shift your overall approach to life, to business and success from being a professional to now an entrepreneur, right? So at this point, I would appreciate if you could share with us the sort of transition that you've had to make, especially to your mindset that you would attribute to your overall success today. Yeah, I say to my mentees that sometimes uh, it almost feels like one needs a brain transplant in the sense that the, the mindset, the approach to life is fundamentally different. Whereas a professional is often driven by a desire to pay bills, um, and maybe just to meet overhead and to do the minimum. The entrepreneur generally is driven by a dream. The entrepreneur is driven by a desire to create something big. 
and it's often not interested so much in what they earn. Uh, entrepreneurs are famous. I think uh, for the first 10 years, I wasn't even getting uh, any pay from the real estate business uh, because I was uh, being sustained by the law firm. So an entrepreneur would have that mindset where you have a bigger dream, a bigger goal that is driving you. Whereas a professional, in my judgment, he wants to just pay those bills. Uh, he's driven by the desire for security to make sure that at the end of the month they're able to, to do the minimum that is required. Ramarobi, there's a lot to be said about time, um, you know, as pertaining to when one can start a business and have it become a success story. You know, this is in regards to, you know, people saying, oh, it's too early for you to start or it's too late for you don't have enough time. So what has been your experience in regards to that? One of the things I've noticed, I mean, uh, Steve Jobs says that, you know, you connect the dots backwards. You know, in other words, you notice things backwards more than when they are happening. Yeah. But looking backwards at my career, sometimes um, I have a sort of um, regret of sorts of saying, I started my personal development journey a bit late. Mm. When I really got into the groove of personal development, I was reading an average of one book a week, and really getting into my, that mindset change, trying to develop myself as an entrepreneur, as a personal development um, practitioner. It seems to me, based on that, the earlier the better. I mean, I, for instance, think that if I had started my personal development journey in terms of being consistent, being intentional, 10 years earlier, I would be a lot further than I am now. So it's never too early to become an entrepreneur. We have examples of people really reaching great heights in their late teens, in their early 20s, you know, the Zuckerbergs of this world. We have on the other side examples of people really starting late. I think the story of Kennel Sanders come to mind. Even the story of the current president of the United States, I mean, people are, are doing really difficult things at late, late time in their life in their 70s and 80s. So my attitude and, and my thinking is that it's never too late. And once you have that bug, that entrepreneurial bug has bitten you, get on with it and, and do what it takes to make a difference. You spoke earlier of um, the conversations that you have with your mentees. Um, and maybe sometimes with aspiring entrepreneurs, right? So what has that experience been like? speaking to some of the frustrations that they have with how much time it is taking for them to reach a certain level of desirable success. Um, paying particular attention to the sort of mistakes that you think they're making. In, in analyzing that, one has to look at the three basic things that are required for success. And the mistakes that happen is if a person overlooks those. In my judgment, the first thing is a preparedness to absorb and take in a large amount of information in your field, to try and become a specialist in your field. That requires literally consciously taking in information from mentors, from podcasts, from books. So that is the first step. So any entrepreneur who fails to devote themselves to personal development in that sense is likely to fail in my judgment. Number two, um, you need to succeed to realize the importance of physical activity. I'm glad science has now caught up in the sense that research has revealed the importance of being physically energetic and being physically active in terms of keeping your brain at a certain level. I'm not a neuroscientist, so I'm not going to be able to explain it, but um, there's evidence to show that physical activity and physical fitness contributes to entrepreneurial success. And the, the, third, the third one, which is sometimes overlooked, um, is the preparedness to place yourself in uncomfortable positions. In other words, to get out of your comfort zone and to get comfortable with discomfort. So in my view, entrepreneurs who are failing or who are struggling fail to see these three things. I try to, to, to teach them by sharing my story. Um, 
I believe in, in what is known as experiential knowledge as opposed to theoretical knowledge. So I constantly tell them, look, I have this deal and this is how we tackle this deal and I actually go through the numbers with them and I get their input. Similarly, I go to my past successes and failures and you'd be amazed how much you can learn also from your failures. I want us to go back to the trigger, the, re the reason why you ventured into entrepreneurship. Do you think that had it not happened the way it did, you'd have went into this with the speed that you did, with the agility with which you did it? To be honest, I think that it was an important blessing in disguise. And I think looking back, like Steve Jobs uh, says, connecting the dots backwards, it was very, very essential to my success. And I can say with certainty, I would not have reached the levels that I've reached had it not been for that event. I call it a cataclysmic event mm. because it was very life-threatening at the time. True. So sometimes uh, you're motivated by something negative like that and it thrusts you forward. And I have that pleasure. Sometimes I think um, my haters, quote-unquote, deserve a trophy. Sometimes I feel like going to some of them uh, because I thought it was an unfair situation and I thought, um, mm. but going back, looking back, I feel like finding a trophy and giving some of them because it was a group of people who were really, really forcing the issue at the time in an unfair manner. But they helped me because they pushed me in this direction. There's always a debate around, you know, employment versus entrepreneurship when somebody is considering leaving that place of employ for the entrepreneurial pursuits, right? And the argument is always, why would one want to leave certainty for a dream that has no surety whatsoever um, of whether or not it would turn out to be a success story? So in your experience or within your wisdom, where do you think or how do you think we could draw the balance when we're deciding whether or not to leave employment? There have been people who have done very well through entrepreneurship. I mean, we have uh, heads of uh, large corporations and, and successful uh, CEOs of banks, for instance, who have done very well for themselves through employment. But by and large, I think you're more likely to beat the red race if you're an entrepreneur than if you are um, an em in employment. And the reason for that is that if you are in employment, there's a ceiling to your income earning capacity. There's a limit to how far you can go. Whereas, at least theoretically with the entrepreneurship, it's limitless. Um, you are guided by the amount of effort you put in and the response of the market and the systems that you put in place. As long as those things are working for you, you have unlimited potential. So. Um, we cannot all be entrepreneurs in the sense of being rugged entrepreneurs out there in the street fighting the system as it were, but we can be entrepreneurial. And I have a saying in the Nuggets where I say intrapreneurs, I-N-T-R-A. Mm -hmm. So you can have an intra entrepreneurial mindset but within an organization. Mm -hmm. You find that even if you are confined in an organization, you can still go places in terms of promotions, in terms of uh, output, in terms of negotiating better deals for yourself, even though you are employed. You can, for, us, for instance, persuade your people to get you on a commission-based system, for instance, if you are entrepreneurial in your mindset. And all it takes, in my judgment, is, a, is the same effort that an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur would make in terms of personal development. Are you reading? Are you exposing yourself? Are you attending seminars? Are you developing yourself? Because it's not about what happens around you, it's, a, it's what happens within you, how you develop yourself, that then changes your situation. So ultimately, Ramu Khobi, what would you say is the biggest lesson or, you know, a key learning from your journey that you would attribute to your astounding success from which maybe a viewer or two would draw inspiration? It's, 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 it's difficult to know where to, st where to start, but in the Nuggets, I have a tagline which I say, we inspire, we energize, we enthuse, and we empower. 
And the reason we have that tagline is because all of those four things, um, as long as you have a mindset towards empowerment, inspiration and so on, you are likely to succeed. So it's a res your personal responsibility, speaking directly to the viewer now, to inspire yourself. And in my uh, experience, the best way to get that inspiration, that self-empowerment, is through personal development. If you want, I'm able to recommend the books. The books are available. I myself am in the middle of writing a book as, as we speak, which will launch before the end of the year. So as long as you are doing something towards energizing and inspiring yourself, your prospects for success are enhanced. So I would encourage the would-be entrepreneur or the entrepreneur out there to work on themselves, to work hard on themselves. Inevitably, the results will come.